Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to talk about how I think the legacy Pokemon ports will be handled on Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch 2. I've wanted to do a video talking about this for a while because when Game Boy and Game Boy Advance got brought over to NSO, the mainline Pokemon games were absent which I thought would have been the case. But this video is mainly to talk about how I think they could bring over older Pokemon games if there are no plans to bring them to Nintendo Switch Online. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? To start with, let's talk about what f new features could come to these ports. To keep things realistic, I don't think an awful lot of quality of life improvements would be added to these games. But starting off with Generations 1 to 3, this is what I think we will get. I think we will get Nintendo Switch Online connectivity, since NSO does actually have online functionality in some of its classic games, and I think online multiplayer and trading would be added. I don't know how matchmaking will work, only because NSO doesn't allow you to play online with random people in the classic games. And online connectivity would probably be a thing across all of them, not just generations 1 to 3. I think filters will transfer over from the NSO collection, such as a filter which reproduces the classic feel, and colour options for the original Game Boy games. And I know this doesn't seem like a realistic feature, widescreen is a thing I would love to see in there as well, because the Sega Classic Collection, with Sonic and stuff, does have widescreen in it, so if they brought it over to Pokemon as well, it could make the game less distracting to play without having to worry about borders and stuff. And just like the virtual console ports on 3DS, with Pokemon Bank integration, I think they will do the same thing here with Pokemon Home. The only thing that would make it more trickier to port is that some Pokemon can't leave the games they were caught in, like special Pokemon for example, as well as partner Pikachu in Pokemon Yellow. Now we're moving on to how each generation would be rolled out, and we're going to start off with Generations 1 to 3. Generations 1 to 3 sound the most realistic for the original Nintendo Switch. I don't think any generation beyond that would be on the original Switch, such as Generations 4 and 5, which we'll get to in a second. But I think Generations 1 to 3 would be Nintendo eShop releases and only eShop releases. Similar to how the original Fire Emblem was a limited release a few years ago, I don't think they are going to release all of them in one go in a Nintendo Switch Online strategy in a way. The way I think they are going to release them is by individual release, including third versions. The first wave would include Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, and a localized version of Green for the first time outside of Japan. Each version would be priced at $10.99 or $9.99 in the UK, and won't be available at no extra cost if you're a standard Nintendo Switch Online member. The Pokemon games would not be integrated into the Game Boy Nintendo Switch Online app because of the Pokemon Home functionalities, but they will be available to download if you're a Nintendo Switch Online member, but if you decide to cancel Nintendo Switch Online later, you would no longer have access to them unless you either 
bought the game individually or started paying for Switch Online again. The second wave would consist of Gold, Silver and Crystal, which would be priced the same way as Red, Blue, Green and Yellow, with a Switch Online release at no extra cost. Generation 3 would be different to Generations 1 and 2, only because we're transitioning to the Game Boy Advance. The third wave would consist of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. These games would go for about $15.99 in the US and $14.99 in the UK. With a Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack release, but bear in mind, unlike Generations 1 and 2, Generation 3 would be locked behind the expansion pack. Fire Red and Leaf Green, yes, I'm including remakes in this video, but they will be released separately from Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, with a similar pricing structure, with an NSO expansion pack release as well. And now, Generation 4 and 5 would be eShop releases as well, but they wouldn't get a Switch Online release at all, because we don't have DS on Switch Online yet. And the fifth wave would consist of Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. These games would go for $24.99 in both the US and the UK. And like I just said, there wouldn't be a no extra cost thing because DS is not on Nintendo Switch Online. And the same goes for the others released on the DS. The sixth wave would consist of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and would go for the same price as Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. The only constraint for the DS Pokemon games is how the event Pokemon are gonna be integrated. The seventh wave would consist of Black and White, and the eighth wave would consist of Black 2 and White 2. And this would be the last eShop only release. Now, we're moving on to Generation 6 and 7. Generation 6 would get an eShop release, but in a different way from the other games. X and Y would be packaged as Pokemon X Remastered and Pokemon Y Remastered. And the only changes from the originals would be the visuals and upscaled sound effects. The way that the X and Y Remasters would be be bundled in is with the expansion pass of Pokemon Legends EA if it gets one. I know this sounds like a Ubisoft move to do, similar to what they've done with their games in the past, including the original Watch Dogs with the season pass of Watch Dogs Legion and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon with the season pass of Far Cry 6. But I think this could work. And upon purchasing the Pokemon Legends Zeta A Expansion Pass, you would get the choice between X Remastered or Y Remastered. I feel like this is a thing Nintendo should do in the future, to make sure they can remaster some of their older games, like Mario Kart X having a Double Dash remaster with its paid DLC, for example. And I think this would mainly be done with GameCube, Wii and 3DS. Everything else would go to NSO. And these remasters would go for $39.99 in the US and $34.99 in the UK. Around a similar price to Metroid Prime Remastered with a digital first physical later structure. Auras would take the same path as X and Y but one year apart. And just like X and Y, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire would be packaged as Omega Ruby Remastered and Alpha Sapphire Remastered, which would be bundled in with Generation 10's Expansion Pass with a digital first physical later structure. And now we are ending off with Generation 7. The biggest problem with porting over Generation 7 is that Sun and Moon has two versions. Sun and Moon, as well as the Ultra Games, which released afterwards. I can admit now, 
we don't need both versions to be re-released. So what I'm doing with Sun and Moon is merging all four versions together to make the game's third version, Pokemon Total Eclipse. Because this would probably have the most changes to it, because it would have an additional story content related to the new legendary Pokemon, as well as upscaled visuals and sound effects. The Ultra Games should have been released on the Switch in the first place, but releasing Pokemon Total Eclipse on the Nintendo Switch 2 will prevent the potential that was wasted known as Pokemon Stars or Pokemon Eclipse or whatever a third version of Sun and Moon could have been called. But Pokemon Total Eclipse would have released early in a given year, just like the Legends games, and I will do a concept video for Total Eclipse in the future, which would talk about the idea a bit more. And Generations 8 and 9, I really don't need to talk about because they don't need to be ported. They're already there. And if the Switch, if the Switch 2 is backwards compatible with Switch games, all of the mainline Pokemon games that are currently there could already work on it. So the only thing that really needs to be done with the Switch Pokemon games is upgrade the visuals. So guys, what do you think of how I think the Legacy Pokemon games will be handled? And I want to hear from you. How do you think they will handle the Legacy Pokemon games in terms of bringing them over? So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one in the future. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out. <laughs>